one. What's going on, everybody? It's Matt, a.k.a. the Lumberjack Landlord here with Mike Zilber from One Rental at a Time. Michael, we are here for segment three, and this is one's going to be action-packed because I've got an itch. We got a scratch. So, oh, no. We yeah. got a vent coming. We got a vent coming. It's coming. I'm putting everybody on notice. Um, talk to me about your last experience mm-hmm. with an appraiser on one of your properties. Refi preferably. Um, so yeah, I've done some refinances here recently. I did a cash out refi on a property. I'll, I'll do my office building. Yeah. So I have an office building. It's called the hub in Fresno. It's got all these awesome real estate folks there. I, I, I did own it free and clear on purpose. I decided that I wanted to raise some capital. Uh, let's just use some round numbers. I think this particular building, heart of Fresno, cute area, tower district. Um, uh, I think it's worth 350 all day long if I had to sell it. Uh, I bought it for significantly less than that and spent some money fixing it up. So I had an appraiser go in uh, and um, let's just say he thought it was worth a lot less. I mean, a lot less. Yeah. So again, again, I think I could sell it for 350. He came back. I think it was 200 or 210. Oh, we're, ta- we're talking like 40 points. Yeah. Yeah. Lower. Yeah. And um, yeah, that that's, that was my last, you know, that was the result of that. So I'll, I'll see what you have to ask. So, next. yeah. So how did you, so what was your next step after you got the appraisal from your bank? Yeah. So I was, call, I, I called up the appraisal appraiser uh, and had a discussion because I'm like, do you, do you not understand that, you know, I bought the building, let's say 150 spent over a hundred grand repairing it, making it nice. And it's all leased, right? It's it's not like it's an empty office. It's actually an office building that's producing income. Mm-hmm. And um, his his answer back is it's an odd building. There's nothing else like it. I'm like, no shit, there's nothing else like it. <laughs> it's why it makes it special, not why it makes it worth nothing, you moron. I mean, it's got deep parking in the back. It's, it's got frontage on the main street. I mean, yeah, it, it, <laughs> He basically penalized it for being unique and completely remodeled. Yeah, I hate things that are one of a kind. Yeah, I hate one of a kind, <laughs> unique, fully leased properties. Yeah. Fabergé uh, eggs with return on capital are horrible. And it's an office building. So this isn't no $400 drive-by appraisal. This is a $25 or $2,900 right. yes. appraisal. Yes, yes, yes. Right? So mm-hmm. again, so I get this. The bank's like... Michael, we agree with you. It's wrong, but do you want to pay for another one? <laughs> you know, it's like, not really. <laughs> so, you know, the good news is I happen to be in a situation where the money wasn't important. Uh, I do feel slighted. I, um, mm-hmm. so I moved forward. I just, I did the deal. It didn't feel good. If I was doing a, like, if I was doing a burr project, right. I'd have been, I'd have been fucked. Crushed. I, mean, I would mm-hmm. crush it. Sorry. Yep. I owe a dollar, but yeah, I would, I would have, I would have, at, the, at those numbers, I probably wouldn't have got my purchase price back. I mean, he was so right. far under. Right. This is why Burr projects are terrible because you're relying on an appraiser who could have a bad day, who could say one of a kind, unique properties fully leased are worth half what they're worth. I mean, I could sell the property today in this market for 350. Yeah. It's a refi cash out. So they are going to be more conservative all the time. Sure. But 40 points more conservative? Really? Mm-hmm. That hurt. That hurt. Yeah, I can imagine. So real quickly, a couple of points that I want to make sure that we cover because a lot of people aren't familiar with commercial appraisals. Commercial appraisals are usually not 30 or 40 page documents or 50 page documents are usually 180 page documents because they're so much bigger. There's allegedly, allegedly so much more work that goes into creating the appropriate comps. Clearly that didn't happen in Michael's case. Yeah, clear, clearly it's a one-of-a-kind property that there's nothing else like it, and thus it's bad. So when we have an appraisal go sideways, it's not six or 700 bucks. In his case, it was 2,500. In my, in my case, it was $4,300. Oh. So the bank will give you two choices. One, move forward. Two, get it redone again. And not at the bank's expense, but at your expense again. So you can roll the dice. And this isn't just 
well, yeah, we'll put it in queue and we'll get one back out to you in two weeks. It starts the process all over again. It's probably six weeks. What is your rate lock? Do you have yeah. a rate lock? It probably expires exactly. in that time and you're paying points. So when the, when the move is as great as it is in the market, as it has been the last six weeks, kind of your option is to take it. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. If I would have got another appraisal, I would have lost my sub 4% rate. Yep. And again, I'm lucky enough to be in a position where the extra 50 grand's not going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. But I was, I was way pissed off. Yeah, way, I way get it. So the story that I have, the, the itch that we have to scratch is a uh, six unit off market. I see the number. I'm like, holy cow, that number is ridiculous. It was only 600,000 bucks for a six unit in a very desirable uh, town with a water view. Oh, wow. Water view. Not, you can't touch the water from there, but you've got a beautiful view of a beautiful landscape and river and lily pads. I mean, it's beautiful. And so, and it's very, this part of this town is very exclusive. There are less than a hundred buildings in this part mm. of the town. Very, very tough to get to. Walking distance to a big, huge river that splits the state. Um, all sorts of cool artist stuff. Like it's a the kayaking, fishing, you name it. It's awesome. So 600,000 is an absolute steal for this property. Mm -hmm. So I'm super excited. I'm like, you know, when you've got one of those deals where it's just like, it's almost too good to be true. And so that's kind of like the deal that turns us back into rookies. Mm. Do you have it yet? Do you have it yet? Do you have it yet? Hey, do you have it yet? Hey, do you have yeah. it yet? Do you have it yet? Oh, do you have it yet? Like you're, you're texting, you're calling, you're emailing, trying to get a hold of your broker. Do we have it yet? It turns you into a rookie, turns you into a first time groom again. You know, just everything is sunshine and roses. And you're just like, I just got to win this deal. Mm -hmm. So we do, we get it under contract, except this seller is a real pain in my, you know what, because every single time we send them anything, they take five days to respond to us. I don't know why. I don't, I don't know what they're doing that for, but they, I know, I promise whoever you are, and I'll, I'll expose who you are after this after this video, like after we've closed, you're not that busy. There's no way. There's no way you're that busy where it takes five days to get a response on a property you're trying to sell for $600,000. So we go through the process, we get the appraisal, we go through the whole nine yards. The appraisal company says, we don't want to go inside the units. We want to do a drive-by for a $4,500 appraisal. Wow. Yep. Yep. Okay. Worse my bank says, okay. Oh, shit. Oh, no. This is not going to be good. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. And so my broker gets the call from the appraiser saying, hey, uh, so we're just going to do a drive-by probably tomorrow, just letting you know. And, um, and we'll be asking you to go get all of our pictures and then just send us the pictures. For $4,300. Mm hmm Wow, that's good business, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd sign me up. I guess. Uh, I'd be more than happy to drive by some properties and have somebody else go take all the pictures. Yeah. Be more than happy to. So this happens. They do the drive by. Then they actually, the appraiser has a couple questions for me. I hear his name and I know it's familiar. Mm. And I'm like, that name sounds familiar. So, um, so I check. I'm checking while I'm on the phone with him. He almost torpedoed another one of my deals six oh. months ago. And I'm like, here we go. So he asks me and he goes, yeah, he goes, it's going to be pretty tough to get to 600. I was like, I'd pay eight. Yeah. What are you talking about? Six. Yeah. And he goes, you'd pay eight for that. I go, yeah, I would. I said, what do you see? So yeah. I'm being as gentle as a lumberjack can be. <laughs> I can't get any more gentle than this. Yeah. What do you see as the three main drivers to that region and to that area that where that house is located? What do you see as the three drivers for that area? Mm -hmm. And his answer was, I mean, I don't really know that there are any. Oh, interesting. That's interesting. Apparently this appraiser knows nothing about the town that he's actually appraising. I said, I said, I forget. I said, where, where are you out of? Boston. Boston. Boston is, might as well be China. It's, right. an, it's a little over an hour away, 
but our markets could not be more different. In this town, there are zero single family or zero condos over a million dollars, over $500,000. Wow. In Boston, there's building after building after building after building of them and commercial stuff up the yin yang. So I say all that to say this. I wasn't trying to put them on the spot. I did have to ask them the question. He couldn't answer the question. And so I am now waiting for this appraisal to come in. He might hit six. He might not. I've already lodged a complaint with the bank saying we cannot be charging me $4,300 or $4,500 for an appraisal and then sending somebody that isn't from the area, doesn't know the three drivers for the area, because Michael, here's the area that he doesn't know anything about. We are, this town actually has rights to send their kids to the best regional high school in the entire tri-state area. Wow. That's one driver. Yeah, I'd say so. Yep. Right? Second driver is it puts them 10 minutes away from the naval shipyard that works on nuclear subs, where the average income is extremely extremely good. Number two. Mm -hmm. Number three, it puts you in New Hampshire, which has no income tax, but you're 10 minutes away from being able to go to Maine, New Hampshire, or Massachusetts, all via the state, the interstate turnpike. Wow. So those are my three drivers why, for why I buy in this town. Yeah. But Maybe I just don't know what I'm doing and the appraiser knows far better. Well, it's not Boston. Right. That's, that's all we know is it's exactly. not Boston. Exactly. And so when I had that conversation with him, he said, yeah, you know, I just, I, I just don't, I just don't think that I, I, I just don't think that's going to make that much of a difference. And I said, so when people are buying a home, if they have kids and these are larger units, they are looking for a great school system check. If they work, and it's not at the local Walmart, they have any sort of a commuting job, they wanna be close to a highway. This is five minutes from a highway and 10 minutes from the interstate, mm -hmm. two. And then three, people that don't pay income tax, legally, state income tax, mm -hmm. people that don't pay state income tax have five to $7,000 per $100,000 more money than if they don't. Exactly. So, we will see how this all turns out. I wasn't meaning to do a cliffhanger for anybody, yeah. but we will see how this turns out because allegedly I will be getting that report next week. And so- Well, we it's actually interesting because I know where you're coming from, but it actually might help you. And again, I don't know the situation at mm -hmm. all, but let's say it came in at 570. Mm -hmm. I know what I would do first. Besides of getting off this stuff, I'd be going back to the seller going, dude, shit, you got me. Yeah got to do 570 the bank well i mean that's how i'd play that but yes don't disagree but i think that they everyone here at the table knows they yeah. took my deal because i was clean i was fast and because the number was they were like listen we're not talking below 600 and yeah. i was like sounds good then we have a right price 600 yeah we'll see because i wasn't going to beat him up. i wasn't going to beat him yeah. up on that the number is that good and i then justified to him i said he said well but what are you basing your rent numbers on? I said, I own a building five houses away. I own another one, seven houses away the other way. Exactly. And these, these are, are real, my rents. Real numbers, yeah. Real numbers, not graphs, not feelings, not, I looked it up and I think that the number should be. Yeah, rent know, a meter. Yeah. yeah, no should be's. Here are numbers that are rents. And so I have seven units within a total of seven houses away from this one building yeah yeah but why would we want to use those numbers michael of, no of course not. it's too close <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. it's far too close to make an accurate representation of what you'll get for rents there yeah exactly. unbelievable so mm -hmm. i implore you if you are looking to do a burr please 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 make sure please don't have it be your maiden voyage please it, it, Michael and I are sophisticated investors, elite investors. He has almost 200 units. I've got just over hundred. We've been doing this for 20 years. Even for people that know the market as well as we know it, 
You never know who your appraiser is going to be, what biases they have, and how far away they came from. And for you, it didn't really hurt overall, but you still yeah. left 50 grand on the table. I did. And yeah. you're never going to get a 4% rate again. So that's lost oh, money forever. 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 So anytime you're doing that refi, you're looking to get everything you possibly can because your hope is I'm not going to refi this ever again. The likelihood is if you're in the threes, which you were, mm -hmm. you're not going to refi that again as an investor. Oh, not at all. It'll be paid off before it's refined. Absolutely. 100%. So I implore people, if you're looking at burrs, if you think that burrs is the way to go, just because there's a lot of videos out there, I am telling you, please be safe. Please don't do a burr as your first investment. It is likely going to get you in trouble because there is zero predictability when it comes to the appraiser. And that appraiser is going to make the decision of how much your house is worth. Not what the market says. It's not what other comps actually are. It's what that appraiser takes from that data that then represents that as being most applicable towards your asset, your, your house. Well said. Awesome. Michael, tell everybody where they can find you, my friend. One rental at a time. Go to Google search bar and type it in. You should see all kinds of stuff. 8 a.m. PST tomorrow, 11 a.m. EST tomorrow. Michael will be there and doing his amazingness on the wonderful YouTube live stream. And then if you're lucky enough to be part of his group, he also has a noon, which is also very good. Frankly, he can be more candid there because people are paying for his content. Yeah. So <laughs> far more. And I don't have to guess where people are coming from. It's, exactly. Yeah. Well, they better have been paying attention to the course yeah. paying for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why'd you ask that question? You're in my course. You shouldn't have asked that question. <laughs> yeah. Go watch this video again. Exactly. Yeah. Need to watch that one more time. You need a case review. So as I always say, we create, we spend a ton of time creating great content for you. Please subscribe, hit the like button. Super excited to have you guys here. Mike, have a great weekend, my friend. We'll talk about it early next week. And uh, at Lumberjack Landlord and at One Rental at a Time on Instagram, you'll see us post things relevant every single day to your successful real estate investment journey and being a landlord. So Mike, thanks so much for the time. Have a great weekend and we will see everybody next week. Take care, everybody.